Hi, my name is Hector Acuna and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm preparing to ship out a recently purchased painting from my online independent shop right on my website at acunaarts.com. Um, so this was a painting that I made in Mineral Point, Wisconsin back in August of this year, 2023. And it was the quick paint that um, I made on the last day of the event in the morning. Um, and this is a gouache painting on mounted Reeves BFK paper. It's a archival acid-free 100% cotton heavyweight paper um, that I glue with a book binding archival glue onto um, birch plywood, half inch birch plywood. And then that piece of plywood is cradled um, with an extra piece of wood so that when I mount the painting into the frame, um, it's the screw is going into the cradle as opposed to that main piece of plywood for the painting. Um, as you can see on the back of the painting, I also have a signed certificate of authenticity. This is on a piece of cardstock heavyweight paper as well. I'm really excited because these um, certificates also have their own um, embossed seal with my initials. So this is a custom um, embossed seal design that I came up with for the certificates of authenticity, which um, gives the collector some more information about the painting. This just stays with the painting that way if this is ever exhibited again or if it's passed on to different owners, the um, information is, is there with the um, certificate of authenticity as well. Um, and these are frames that I make by hand in my garage wood shop, um, as I'm sure some of you have seen in past videos. I like to make my own panels and canvases and frames, um, primarily because it's hard to find frames that I really enjoy. Um, the overall look and the way that it will complement my work um, without really breaking the bank. So I've practiced over the past uh, like 10 years um, and have figured out a way to make frames that I really like that I can manage with the time frames that I have and the budget that I have. Um, but anyway, uh, in this video, I thought I'd show you how I package and prepare a sold painting to ship off to a collector. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. All right, so some of the materials that I'll be using today in this video um, are going to include a metal ruler. Um, this is going to be for cutting down cardboard with a straight edge. It's also helpful to be able to measure the frame of the painting, um, pieces of cardboard, things like that. I'll be using some of this plastic wrap, um, especially once I have a piece of cardboard to cover the front of the painting. I like to wrap the frame with this plastic wrap just so that cardboard doesn't slide around. Um, also to cut the cardboard, I have an X-Acto knife. Um, try to make sure you have one with a safety uh, kind of clip like this to um, you know, cover the, the knife of the blade when you're not using it. So I have one of those. Um, I don't know if I'll use a pair of scissors, but I brought it just in case. Um, a pencil or a pen to be able to mark the cardboard um, if you need it. Uh, tape, packaging tape, this is definitely essential when you're packaging artwork. Um, I like to use this plastic uh, kind of tape because um, it's a lot more sticky. It tends to adhere better to cardboard um, and to itself. I've also packaged paintings with painter's tape and masking tape, and I've had issues where the tape will start to peel off while I'm trying to package things. So this is what I generally use. Um, and because that roll is almost out, I have a backup roll here. Um, I'll be using bubble wrap to protect the frame of the painting. Um, and typically I will wrap the uh, frame and the painting first and then find a cardboard box that will fit the painting. And if I don't have one that already fits, I oftentimes will have to cut one down to um, have a, a tighter fit for the painting. So it's sort of like a custom box from a recycled box. Um, but I do already have some pieces of cardboard that I've pulled out from my stockpile that I'll show you here um, in a moment, but I might be using some of this to wrap the painting um, in the video. Uh, my plan is, is just to switch my camera over to a time-lapse um, and show a faster process. That way this video isn't 
um, like 30 or 45 minutes long, uh, like it would be in real time. But this way you at least have an idea of what I'm using in the time lapse. And then the last thing I'll point out here is a holiday um, thank you card that I'll write up for the collector and add in with my uh, with my painting in the box. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and start wrapping this up. All right, so I like to cut my cardboard just a little bit proud or a little bit past the actual dimensions of my frames. That way um, it's going to ensure that if something hits the edge of the package, um, you know, or hits the edge of the painting, it's gonna hit this cardboard instead of the actual frame of the painting. So it gives it a little bit more protection. Um, and then I realized I didn't mention having a cutting mat as part of the materials. So um, please make sure that you're using some sort of safety mat if you're gonna be using any kind of knife or X-Acto blade um, if you decide to package your artwork this way. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention just in terms of safety with these X-Acto blades, when I was in school as an undergrad student, I took a design class uh, that was sort of an intro class and we talked about some of these materials when you're presenting your work or mounting work uh, on paper to, you know, um, cardstock or mat board. And we had to use exacto knives and, and rulers. And my instructor, I remember, said, um, uh, he gave us a tip that I've really held on to over the years, which is that when you're using an exacto blade, make sure that you're not pushing down with full force as you're dragging the knife towards you, because typically you're having to cut towards yourself. I mean, sometimes you can maybe cut this way so it's away from your body, but um, a lot of times for me, I end up cutting towards myself. So there's two things. One, the way that I hold the ruler, um, I try to keep my thumb as far to the left side of the ruler as possible as I'm cutting, because I don't want to accidentally slip and then cut my thumb or my other fingers on my left hand. The other thing is that in terms of pressure, he told us that you know, it's smarter and uh, safer to press down lightly and go over the material multiple times as opposed to pushing down as hard as you can and trying to cut whatever you're trying to cut in one pass. Because um, typically that's when we end up hurting ourselves is when we're using a lot of force and pulling really hard towards ourselves. And what'll happen sometimes is that the knife will sometimes skip over the ruler or it'll get caught in the material, so we'll pull even harder, and then because of that momentum, we end up cutting ourselves um, more frequently. So just make sure to be careful when you're using tools like this. Um, make sure you're in a safe environment um, and that you've followed as many safety procedures and protocols that you, that you have. But those are a couple of tips that I've learned when cutting cardboard like this. So back to the time lapse. So one thing I like to do um, before I wrap over the sides of the bubble wrap is to go back and check which side of the painting is the top and to provide a little bit of extra support um, and protection for the front of the painting, I like to wrap the excess bubble wrap towards the top side of the painting. So um, I can see through my cardboard. Um, luckily this time I used two different thicknesses. So I have a double walled cardboard on the top of the painting and a single walled cardboard on the bottom. So I can tell that this is the top, but if you're using the same exact kind of cardboard, um, I would recommend putting some sort of like blue piece of tape or label, um, just so you can go back and double check which side was the top. Sometimes you might also be able to feel where your hanging hardware is. Um, but in the case that it's very even, um, that's my recommendation. So that's what I'm gonna do today.
so um, I found a box that is deep enough um, where I probably won't need to add too much extra reinforcement or padding on the top or the bottom of the painting, but there is enough wiggle room um, in this direction where I can feed in a little bit more bubble wrap or cardboard, most likely. Um, and all I have to do is trim the box here so that this portion can flip over or um, part of it can be cut out so that I can tape up the box. So um, this is gonna be the perfect size for shipping this painting. All right, so the box is all done. Um, you can see the painting doesn't slide around at all inside the box, so it's got a really nice snug fit. I put a few pieces of folded cardboard, so they have this kind of springy um, structure to them in these two sides here, just to kind of reinforce these two sides of the cardboard since they don't have this extra roll of bubble wrap around the painting. Um, and the height of the wrapped painting is about the same height as the box. So everything is gonna be really snug and tight. Um, so I have a pretty good feeling that it would take a lot for the painting to be damaged um, with this way of shipping. Something that you could do, and which I've done before, is add another layer of cardboard on the top and the bottom around the bubble wrap. Um, uh, you know, this is a, a painting that I don't really have to ship super far, so um, I'm, you know, not too worried about that uh, in this package, but um, just as a, you know, an idea or a reminder, that is something that you can do. Um, you can see over on this side, this is where I had to um, take apart some areas of the box, and luckily it was pretty easy to, to make a few cuts and slide this interior piece over, um, and then just make a few cuts on the sides of the box to be able to fold everything over and tape it up. So now what I'll do is fold the two inside flaps and then the remaining two I'll tape across this way and then I'll make sure to tape really well around this seal here and over on this side as well. Um, and then usually I'll add some extra tape kind of on these edges on the other side of the box. And then it's all done and I can put my label on and head over to the post office. All right, so that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed um, watching the way that I like to package and ship out sold paintings. Um, I also wanna just say thank you so much to everyone who has purchased my artwork this year, um, whether that's through a gallery or through a plein air event or commissioned painting or directly from my independent online shop uh, where this painting was sold. So um, thank you so much to my collectors. If you're watching this video and you'd like to find out more information on how to purchase my work or where to purchase my work, um, please visit my website that has all of that information. 
Um, I hope you also learned something if you're an artist, especially. Um, I've learned a lot of some of these techniques and methods through other YouTube videos online. So I'm, I'm really excited and happy to be part of the uh, YouTube artist community um, just to share some of the knowledge and helpful information that I've picked up along the way. So um, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching um, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.